Hey folks, I've been on a little bit of a uh, binge on continuing care retirement communities lately. And I came across this article I was doing some research on that I want to share with you. It's absolutely important for you if you're looking at continuing care retirement communities uh, to understand the basics of them uh, from a different point of view than someone A who is selling them or even from a consumer who may or may not have their thoughts on it, but they might know the true ins and outs on it. So I'm going to share this one with you. So welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends. If you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe down below. And if you do subscribe, and you should, uh, hit the notification bell because we're just doing tons of stuff here. We're in the midst of a life insurance tutorial series. We're going on to continuing care retirement communities as well. Um, so this one is a, a guy had written it uh, in the California. So specific to California in terms of what he's specifically talking about. But the basics of CCRCs is actually uh, laid out real clearly. A little bit old, uh, going back almost 10 years now, but a lot of the fundamentals are still structurally sound for sure. Uh, California advocates for nursing home reform. Uh, so my implication is they might be one of those Ralph Nader uh, public interest groups that uh, and they always kind of concern me because they have a different angle and maybe ways they can uh, sue these guys uh, to get some uh, money for their nonprofit. And I don't know, but every time I see something like that, I always have raise a, a red flag for me because I'm very familiar with PERG, public interest research group that Ralph Nader had. And they, uh, they did lots and lots and lots of lawsuits, some of which were good, a lot of which was bad just to separate uh, corporations from their money. Um, and so I don't know if that's what these guys are doing, but anytime I see a uh, name like Advocates for Nursing Home Reform, it always raises a red flag. So either way, this still has a lot of good um, art, good information for it, and I want to share it with you. And I'll put the link in the show notes, too. It is 17 pages. I'm obviously not going to read these verbatim. Uh, but I like what he says here. Moving into CCRC is arguably the single biggest decision consumers make during their retirement. It involves major lifestyle changes and significant financial commitments. Economic penalties for breaking a contract are very high, leaving many consumers with no other option once the contract has been signed. I, I cannot stress that enough. That I mean, my goodness. I'm, well, I just let's just say I could not stress that enough. So you got to be very, very careful when you're signing the dotted line to understand what you're going into. Um, in addition to dealing with personal considerations like location, the size and the age of the facility, amenities of, of independent living units and the overall complex, this guy is gonna focus on the finances, which I like. Uh, is this an affordable option for you? And can you pay the sub substantial upfront entrance fees on ongoing charges over your lifetime? All right, so uh, they're also gonna talk about the different types of contracts, assessing availability and quality services, uh, so let's start off with the CCRC acts like long-term care insurance policy, I 100% agree, guaranteeing a range of basic service at the independent level, uh, living level, and the highest level of need of care. Now, we've talked about that before. You start assist, uh, independent living, go to assist living, then finally nursing home care. And each one, essentially what you're doing is you're kind of paying up front, more up front for the, your independent living to cover the cost of your nursing home care if you need it. So you're paying a little bit more on this side so that we can pay a little bit less on that side from a nursing home perspective. And it makes sense. Uh, the amount of interest fee, um, let's see here. Uh, there are some, uh, okay, the amount of interest fees are limited, but monthly fees can be very high. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, this, oh, this is just for California specifically. So we're going to just kind of skip through that. All right. Uh, whether a CCRC is right for you is both a financial and personal decision, uh, consideration. One of the main attractions of the CCRC is a peace of mind that comes from meeting one's long-term care needs. 100% agree. In a single setting. Yep. Uh, it takes away the guesswork and hassle of arranging for future care needs. A primary value for couples is the ability to remain together at least to be on the same campus if one spouse requires a higher level of care. Although this is not strictly aging in place, living together in one's independent unit, CCRC's option the op offer the option of aging in a community on a campus. I, I'm telling you, I think that's critically important without question. Uh, they talk about the community culture. The decision to move in a CCRC offers advantages, but also some unique challenges. It is a permanent move and can involve leaving familiar settings like your family home and neighborhood, as maybe even move into another state or another part of the state against a major lifestyle change. Uh, if you're just going to a cottage, maybe not so much. If you're going to an apartment, it certainly is. You've been used to living in your own home for many, many years. 
Uh, they also provide another number of services um, that you might have been doing for yourself, basic maintenance, uh, snow removal, mowing the lawns, getting on the roof, washing windows, even some like we talked about will give you food there too. Uh, one of the major adjustments can be living for the first time in a peer age community. All of one's neighbors are the same age and the only age diversity is from the staff and visitors. And I think that could be a challenge. Um, but perhaps the greatest challenge is to face one's own aging process and one's own mortality. Uh, and CCRCs, one is surrounded by the both the vitality of aging as well as decline. I, I tell you, that's I think that's absolutely I, what a wonderful not wonderful, but a great statement to ponder. I mean, you're seeing like age people declining in front of your very eyes and you're not getting the younger folks in that you might be accustomed to in your neighborhood. And I don't know what that do for your men mentality, but I think that could be problematic. Um, it may, I mean, it might not, it might, I, I just don't know, but you think about it, you live like in my neighborhood, we got some older folks up the street. We've always had some elderly neighbors and we've loved them. Um, and I think we've kept, we kept them in some way young because our family just, they enjoyed it immensely. If you're only around older people, other than seeing a grandkid on occasion, I don't know. I think that could be a challenge. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just think you got to be prepared for that. Uh, another important issue is your experience of compatibility with the residents you met during your visits. Is there enough common interest and background? Remember, and I was looking at one for VMRC about how they can put people out of termination and really... <laughs> Just because you don't agree with them politically doesn't mean you're going to be terminated. They're going to be terminated. You just got to deal with that. And you're going to have to deal with them, too. It's almost like being a high school campus in a way. You know, there's that guy who voted for Obama. There's that guy who voted for Trump. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can stay away from each other, but you're going to see each other, too. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we talked about location, uh, facility characteristics, and ownership. Uh, and, okay, so finally, it may be important to some consumers whether they live in a nonprofit or a for profit uh, operated CCRC. Nonprofit providers dominate the arena. They do not have shareholders and profits are supposed to be used to benefit consumers by maintaining affordability, uh, controlling the amount of rate increases, improving services, et cetera. They might ha also have a foundation or a fund to financially support residents who, uh, who outlive their funds. However, the nonprofit label can be misleading. Sponsoring organizations like churches or fraternal organizations might offer their name only, but have limited to no financial responsibility for the CCRC or its administration. Uh, and uh, let's see, overall admin might be contracted to for-profit management firms and executive pay packages might rival for-profit providers. Uh, for-profit providers are somewhat new to the field, in California they say, uh, instead of experience of providing the full range of services to living uh, from independent living to long-term care, for-profit providers usually have experience in only one aspect of CCRCs, which is uh, independent living like, with corporations like Hyatt or Marriott or nursing home cares like Sunrise. They often they are often subsidiary, subsidiaries of larger corporations with headquarters in a different part of the state. However, there's not much to distinguish the two. All right, so entrance fee, can you afford it? Entrance fee are one-time upfront charge uh, for the right to enter the CCRC. All right, so entrance fees are often paid by the sale of a home or an investment. The amount of the entrance fee will definitely be affected by the newness of the facility with some studies showing that the amount of the interest fee can be twice as high for newer facilities. Other factors that affect the amount are the location of the facility, the, facility, the size and the amenities. Uh, as a rule of thumb, entrance fees are usually set at or above the median home values in the neighbor in the area where it's located and can range from anywhere from a hundred thousand over a million bucks. So just remember that. I think that's critically important. If you're in a, Los Angeles, California, and you're going to go to a CCRC in Los Angeles, California, you're not going to get an entrance fee similar to what it's going to cost in Huntsville, Alabama. You're just not. Monthly fees can range from three to six thousand bucks per month. And that's for independent living units, your cottages that you have on your own, where you don't have any assistance, any care whatsoever. Uh, and then five thousand over ten thousand for higher care levels. There might be a higher fixed monthly rate for a life care contract. Couples can be faced with very high comb combined monthly fees when one spouse remains independent and the other is paying for a higher level of care. Uh, and I, and I tell you, this is critically important right here. I talked about this in my last episode. You also need to plan for an annual increase in monthly rates ranging from four to six percent for independent living units and perhaps more for higher level care. I, when I did my thing on VMRC, uh, they're increasing by 60 to 70 dollars a month. And more of their, uh, um, and that was an independent care. And so if their monthly fee was say four thousand dollars a month, 
and they're raising by sixty dollars a month. Oops, sixty dollars divided by four thousand. Now just that's a you know it's two and a half percent right there, so that's spot on. And oh wait, no, that's not that's four. Yeah, so that's uh, you know, that's not that's not chump change, and they do it every single year. Uh, so you just got to keep that in the back of your mind as well. Uh, in addition to monthly fees, there are costs for routine living expenses, health and other insurances. Yeah, I mean Medicare. You still have Medicare premiums. You still have Medicare copays. You got the premiums on Medicare B and D. So just keep that in mind. Now, this is what I want to hit on. This is pretty interesting. Adequacy of income analysis. As part of the evaluation of your finances, CCRC is conducting an analysis of the adequacy of your income to cover present and projected future cost. The key criteria used in making this analysis are the amount and sources of monthly income, the amount of assets available to produce income or to be tapped to cover future expenses and actuarial age. They're gambling on when you're going to die. That's just all there is to it. Some providers use a formula to determine an applicant's income uh, adequacy, uh, CCR monthly fee times 1.6 multiple times 12 months. Uh, the multiple takes into account other necessary living expenses and might be higher for some providers. Projections of future income adequacy are done by adding 4 to 6% to the monthly fee rate and then applying the formula. Now, this is a great example right here. John and his wife, Mary, they recently sold a home clearing $750,000. They also have investments around $500,000 and a monthly income from Social Security pension and investments of $8,000. The unit they're looking at has an interest fee of six hundred thousand, and they will probably spend another seventy-five to one hundred for improvements and moving expenses. Their monthly meal fees in the two-bedroom in, uh, independent living unit with the two meals a day will initially be forty-five hundred dollars a month. All right, so you're thinking, all right, well, they they got that, and they do absolutely. Um, Analyze the above example: the lands can afford the interest fee and monthly fees at the CCRC, but in the fourth year, their stay will have to begin by dipping into their savings. Um, let's see, we're to, based on the actual, okay, uh, by dipping into the investment reserves. Based on the actuarial tables, they have to make sure that their funds will last at least 10.83 years for John and 12 for Mary, because John's 74 and Mary's 72, and taking into account the possibility of covering increased monthly fees for higher levels of care. Actually, now I think about it, I don't get that. They got, they got income from pension investments. And, uh, they don't really just tell much how much their income from pension and Social Security is and how much from investments. So I'm not sure how they're getting that number, but it's still good to know. I mean, if you got income of six thousand dollars and it's coming primarily from investments and a little bit from Social Security and all you got is five hundred thousand dollars of assets, um, you know, it's, it's not hard to figure out how long it's going to be until you're dipping into that for sure. This case was seen to me with two pension or to at least one pension and then two social securities. I would think their investments of the 8,000 might be only 2,000 or so. So I don't see how they're getting that, that they're going to need to dip into their investments uh, within four years. I don't get it. Um, it should be noted that there are no government programs or subsidies for independent assisted living. Okay. Uh, most CCRCs do not accept Medicaid. All right. That's, you know, they're talking Medi-Cal in California. So Medicaid is the same thing. Uh, it's just like most doctors don't accept Medicaid, um, they don't accept Medicare because Medicare has a higher payout. Medicaid does not uh, payment for nursing home care. So if you're looking at a nursing home and you're on Medicaid, they're not going to take it. It's just, there's just no getting around that. And Medicare covers only short term rehabilitation. Uh, key elements of uh, continuing care contracts. Um, all, rev all reviewed by the state of California here. I, you know, whatever your state is got to look at that. Uh, disqualifying conditions, contract term. You want to look at these things. Refundable entrance fee, uh, the contract termination. That's what I was just talking about. You know, some guy starts, you know, shooting guns. They're going to terminate them. Um, refundable entrance fee. Some contracts provide a refund of all or a fixed percentage of the interest fee. Others offer a partial refund on the declining scale based on a percentage. There's sometimes an option option to share in the profit if their unit is resold at a higher amount. Uh, these refunds are paid at death, usually after the unit is resold. Uh, so I, I, I tell, I'm not the hugest fan of the refundable ones, frankly. I actually like the ability to keep the money in your own back pocket, even if because you're going to pay less to get in because you're not going to have a refund on the back end. And again, the refunds, at least the ones I've seen, they don't pay any interest all whatsoever. So if you're going to be in there actuarially 15 years, that's 15 years of a refund that's just getting eaten alive by inflation. 
a uh, few facilities to offer ownership improvements. If you're going to make an improvement, you got to get contract. You got to get uh, approval for sure. All right. So here's some of the, uh, <laughs> there are variations of the basic types of contracts with over 20 offered by California CCRCs. Wow. Uh, the life care contracts, I do want to talk about that one. Uh, that's extensive or type A establishes standard monthly fee rate for all levels of care with only annual monthly rate increases allowed and guarantee for life, even if the residence funds become inadequate to cover the full cost of care and services. Uh, care services include primary and acute care, high levels of care, assisted living and nursing home that must be provided for on site or adjacent to the facility. Uh, this is usually the most expensive option. Absolutely, because you're paying to make sure that you don't get hammered on fees and they're locking themselves in to cover you if something goes awry and they need to come up with the money to, to take care of you. Uh, entrance fees are usually not refundable, but beyond the 90 day trial period. Again, that's going to be all contingent on what your contract with your company is. But remember, life care contract is probably going to be the highest because they're, they're they're at the most risk. Uh, they are for sure. You're at a risk, too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, my goodness. But they're at the most risk because they're saying we're going to cover you with this guaranteed monthly fee. And that monthly fee can go up, but only on a percentage base. Essentially, it's like an insurance contract. If we raise it for you, we got to raise it for everybody. Uh, life care contracts used to be the norm, but are going out of favor because the high and uncontrollable cost of health care and increasing life expectancy. Yeah, that doesn't shock me. Uh, modified contracts type B. This option involves entrance fees uh, and monthly fees with a guarantee access to higher level of care, usually at a reduced rate or at a set period of time before market rate fees come into play. Uh, there might be options for full or partial refund of entrance fees. The modified contract is usually less co costly than the life care contract from an entrance fee and a monthly fee standpoint. I mean, again, anything where you're giving up uh, potential for future benefit, you're going to pay less. The refundable contract, you're giving up potential for refund on your entrance fee. That means you're going to pay less. No other way around that. But on the back end, you're not going to get anything back. So that makes sense. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of fee for service ones, at least the ones I've looked at. But uh, this option involves entrance fees and monthly fees with a guaranteed access to higher levels of care. Again, they're guaranteed the access to higher levels, but they're not guaranteed the price of those higher levels. Uh, the residents pay for higher levels of care at the prevailing market rate. The resident assumes the risk of future level of care costs directly. So again, you're paying for access guaranteed, but you're not paying for guaranteed rates of access. Uh, how might these three different groups apply to Ruby's situation? She's 87. She has about 11 years of life expectancy, assets of 800,000 bucks, an income from Social Security and pension of $5,500 a month. She's interested in a one bedroom unit in a CCRC a life care contract. Her entrance fee, non-refundable, is 600,000 bucks and her monthly fee is 4,000. After five years in the facility, she needs nursing home care and continues to pay a 4,000 per month fee. Uh, which is what she's already prepaid for it. Because look at that, the entrance fee is pretty uh, significant. Modified contract here, her entrance fee refundable at 90% uh, for six years is only $450,000. And her monthly fee is $3,500. If she needs nursing home care, the cost will jump up to 7,500. So there's a risk. You're going to save $150,000 on the entrance fee. And you're going to save $500 a month on your monthly fee, and you're going to pay significantly more than Miss Ruby is if you do need uh, the nursing home uh, care. That might be a good risk worth taking, frankly. I, I would consider that for sure, as long as you didn't burn the money and don't have any left over. Um, and you still get a, a pretty decent refundable amount after six years. Fee for service. This is the cheapest one. Her entry fee is fully refundable at death. It's $350,000. Her monthly fee is $4,250. And when she needs a nursing home care, it'll be 10,000 per month or the prevailing rate. And that's the, the bogey or whatever it's called, the golf. We don't know what the prevailing rate is going to be. And that's where the risk is. I haven't seen too many of these, actually. So I've seen the reduced uh, entrance fees and the higher monthly fees. Um, and of course, the life care contracts are the easiest one to navigate because you know you're paying a significant amount of money up front and you know you're paying a flat fee uh, for the for the extenuate uh, and for your entire stay. So I, I kind of like that. I like these two the best. This one, the I would like this better, except for the fact the prevailing rate always kind of concerns me and I'm pretty conservative. All right. So that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Here's some tips. Um, 
Let's see what else they talk about. Uh, since people are generally in good health upon entry to independent uh, independent units, they often do not consider accessibility features in independent living units that might allow them to safely remain in their apartments, like grab bars by the toilet in the shower and doorway dimension that would uh, permit wheelchair access. So uh, check with long-term care program. Uh, check the local. Okay. So just some ways to check there. And, and these are things just about assisted living, what you need to be looking at. Uh, and then of course, nursing home care as well. Um, atmosphere of respect, uh, residential self-determination. So I'm not going to talk about that. You can look at this right here. And I don't know who these guys are, California advocates for nursing home. Uh, but I do like the, uh, uh, CCR branch of Sacramento also maintains comprehensive files detailing, uh, dealing primarily with financial reports on each CCRC. So a couple of things. I've looked at a number of CCRCs and the financial reports are available for you to look at for sure. You can see uh, all of them and you should. <laughs> I mean, because you're going to pay a monster amount of money on the front end. You're not you're not getting a 30 year fixed mortgage. We're only putting $20,000 here, my friends. It's not like that at all. It's the exact opposite. So I hope this helps you. CCRCs, this is a good model here. I mean, I, I was doing some serious research and even though this is from 2009, it's still one of the best articles I came across. And if you're looking at CCRCs, you should look at it for sure. Uh, like I said in my last episode, I am going to be doing a podcast interview with a guy named Brad from mylifesite.com. Uh, he's a CCRC expert and a certified financial planner as well. I'll be doing a podcast with him uh, two weeks, I think. Um, and I should, that should be pretty interesting. So to view that part or listen to that podcast, just go to heritagewealthplanning.com. And then there's a link for podcasts with heritagewealthplanning.com podcast. And you can see all my podcasts on there too. Or if you just got iTunes, just go to your phone and the iTunes, you just type in the Josh Scanlon podcast. Pretty unique, the Josh Scanlon podcast. So if you like that, uh, click on that as well. So again, as always, if you like what you see here at Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, click the subscribe button down there, please. Hit the notification tab, be notified for future content. Uh, don't forget to comment. Comments are always welcome and thumbs up always welcome as well. Look forward to seeing you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.